So I'm here with Peter Hessney at the ID Tech X show. Peter, tell us about your company, Sensor Films. Well, we appreciate the time uh, that you take or go with having us uh, at the ID Tech X show. Uh, our products are all equipment based with the consumable materials and it's focusing at 2.5D digital printing and additive manufacturing of both decorative and functional materials. This right here is our start system and we really came up with this system about a year ago after we had a number of companies that came to a variety of shows like your ID Tech X show both in Berlin and here in the US in Santa Clara and they would be working with a certain ink or on a certain substrate using the Fuji Dymatics 28, 31, and 51 hmm. printer, but they couldn't migrate that into a production environment. Right. And so what we ended up doing is we took and we set up a system that more or less allows different people, whether it's the end users themselves wanting to build a prototype or device, or actually a chemical company or a substrate company, where they can go and test out a variety of different fluids, a variety of different substrates, and make articles that can scale later on into a production environment. Right. And so the whole thought process behind that was we were having the Starlight system that we've sold in many decorative applications, and now people want to try all different functional materials, conductive materials, a variety of nanoparticle uh, materials, and have those formulated to be digitally deposited at speed. Right. And so we wanted to have a progression environment that was very easy for them to do that, was very capable, and we could characterize at a prototyping level up into a production environment with a lot faster ease at lower cost. Right. And that's really what we did between Start and Starlight. Right. And so these are some of the things you've produced on the system? Yeah. Yeah, depending on what we do, right, we've started out doing a lot of sensor films right. that were sensors aspects of it that could be made using both conductive and dielectric materials and at the same time a decorative marking material for the fiducials on the edge. And so a lot of advantages that digital inkjet brings is higher precision at faster speeds. The challenges with it is there's still so many screen printable inks and other slot die coated things that digital allows you to have a digital file change over much quicker and faster. You can LED and photonically cure, like with Nova Centric, just photonic curings, conduct them nanoparticle inks, center them at speeds that today weren't possible several years ago. What sort of applications are seeing this as most useful in the These short term? These uh, are four sensors in that. A lot of different types of small electrical circuitry mm. that you want to do a variety of sensors for temperature, um, just low cost, sensor, uh, low cost sensor environments that, that make sense to go do. The, the key behind this is being able to do it on glass, doing it on a variety of plastics and have it, the materials be able to be done at cost structures that are multiple times less than the screen printing process. And that's really what we, we brought to bear. We're putting these in wearable devices. They're going in biosensors right. today aspect of things. People are using digital inkjet for putting down proteins and different right. other high cost, more expensive devices than even that. And so that's really the future, we think, of why many chemical companies and people have come to us to talk about digital inkjet and right. being able to do it. So you're gonna see, we're on the high end of digital piezo inkjet, so we're just below where aerosol jet is from like an Optimex in that. Right. Because we have a 40 micron aperture inside of the print head, so it allows us to take, and we can take the print head up to 140 degrees C, mm. which most other print heads only go to 80, 90 degrees C, we can change the viscosity profile of the material mm. and jet it where before you couldn't do it in jet wise. When you put one of these machines in with a company, how much training is needed for them to start using it and printing? Right, well, that's a that's a great that's a great question. Usually, we'll start them out in an environment to make some prototypes and things like that that they're very comfortable with that, and then we have a whole setup of 
you know, putting in a system, qualification test, pre-production runs up to a certain level of volume in that before it, it becomes in a, a production environment. We have several automotive companies that have this in there and they were ironically some of the first people, some aerospace companies aspect of it, and we're now just starting to get in in the consumer type of volume. You know, the, the key with this is we deal with how do you pre-treat the material so we have a vacuum heated platen on this. The purpose of having a vacuum heated platen is we can take up many properties of the plastics materials, a variety of plastics, and get them at an area to get good adhesion right. with that. We add in, we have a CCD lamp in here, and it allows you to put a drop on a drop within a five micron precision accuracy. Wow. So that's really the difference that other folks have. So people in the 3D printing world can print up you know, and keep that thing going at a certain rate, but there's not a lot of people that can print multiple pass, multiple layer stuff at speeds of like 90 feet per minute with materials, can't do that. And we leverage a lot of technology and a relationship out of Xerox Corporation in order to execute that so that we didn't do it all on our own. Right. And, and, and that's really the, I think, um, positive nature of how, how we're applied um, our efforts into making printable electronics, flexible hybrid electronic circuitry. And what's exciting for us right now is we're working with companies like Boeing, GE, Jabil to make a flexible hybrid electronic circuit that'll add pick and place components, conductive adhesives, materials that you can't inkjet digitally, but you can put down in precision with other deposition head technologies at speed. And we're trying to integrate and be a systems integrator of those other pieces of material in there so you can make circuitry. And whether I'm putting down an LED with a conductive ink and a dielectric, that's what we're trying to do. So we've had a lot of busy activity today. I think you guys here at ID Tech X for Santa Clara get a great base of OEMs here. And that's really what brings us back and, and, and why we think it's so important is the quality of the people coming to have problems solved are very, very good. It's better than any other um, shows that we've attended. And we go to a lot of other shows. Peter, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks.